how do you like how do you stay intact or updated on the latest branding trends and tools in the in the marketplace so i definitely try to keep up with reading um i read a lot of um a lot of non-fiction so how businesses essentially are then and try to um to tie that to what i currently do so i also take up courses uh there are quite a lot of exhaustive resources that you can take up and they are free. So I, I do that as well. I, I think there's a 40 hour, 40 hour course that Google has given for small businesses online to learn. So I go and reference that as well. Yeah, so it's a lot of reading, a lot of online researching and keeping up with the news. So what are some of these now? fiction with your favorite and fiction books that you have read that you can advise uh, any entrepreneur out there just to read and uh, for them to develop their branding skills and to stay uh, with their trends in the market? So I think um, I would recommend uh, um, Shugin. Shooting by Phil Knight. So Phil Knight is the founder of Nike, the shoe brand, the leisure, not leisure company, leisure goods company, but it started off as making shoes. The story is very inspiring. I believe um, when you aspire and you wish to build something, inspiration goes along in helping you understand how not everything you see appearing very rosy started off that way. The situation and the scenario shared in those books are very unique to, of course, the market he was serving, the time he was starting his company. And maybe if you start your shoe company now, you might not succeed, but there's a lot of learnings in terms of, as an individual, the resilience, belief, in, in what you're doing, um, not tearing to iterate. So someone has told you you have the worst shoe. Uh, maybe in a showcase, but you don't stop there. So I think that is, um, so it's, uh, it's non-fiction in the sense, it's actually from Bill, uh, it's an autobiography, it's a real story. Um, that's one of the books I think really catapulted me to tap into my entrepreneurship spirit. And then there's, uh, there's also, it's called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Uh, it, talk, it talks about building, trying to work around, creating an idea that's very unique, which is very hard but what that entails and what you have to go through. You have to try and think about your business idea from a very different angle. Yes, you want to serve a need in your community, but what ultimately can this need, can it grow beyond you? How can it grow beyond just serving the people you're working with? Yeah. So those two books, I think, are, are a good place to start. Then, but definitely keeping up. I, I recommend even reading the business except in the in the newspaper every day is also a good place to enrich your knowledge. I think businesses are featured every day on newspapers. It doesn't have to be a book that you read. You can always make sure you brush through the business pages of the daily newspapers you have in the country. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, now I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to think because uh, you understand that uh, Somo is dealing with uh, local entrepreneurs, um, the Mamambogas and all this. And what you've said, reading books and uh, reading uh, business except from daily nations and all these things, listening to broadcasts. Uh, but we have this entrepreneur who, who does not have the privilege to maybe to afford this book or maybe to afford a newspaper 
and all this. Uh, so how will you advise this uh, local growing entrepreneur to go about so that you know they don't miss out? I think uh, they have the excellent opportunity to have SOMO, we are trying to bring these resources closer. And by resources, I mean, uh, I mean the community centers, so visiting those community centers, I think definitely attending their classes, but also uh, I feel humans or human beings are walking encyclopedias with stories. So you, your experience is very different from someone else's experience. So for that Mamamboga who has a soul somewhere um, selling vegetables, this definitely, for example, someone next, a few businesses which are close or similar to her there. So this, maybe the person running a butchery there's a person who's selling maize every day. There's someone who is a cobbler. We have a lot of information as human beings amongst ourselves. And I believe in community and, and I believe in mentorship. So there's always something to learn. And the worst thing I think someone can ever do to you is to tell you no. And they continue with what they were doing. So while you don't have access to the daily newspaper, uh, you might have access to the newspaper vendor who will let you read a few pages before he sells all the papers that day or give, give you a chance to read the leftover newspaper. Um, there's definitely maybe the butchery guy next to your, your shop who started off with selling 10 kgs a day, they're now selling 30. Asking him or her what they've done to improve their business is a place or a source of knowledge. Maybe it's the LED lighting they changed. Maybe it, they started giving, if you buy half a kilo or a quarter kilo of meat, they uh, decided to give you, to give their customers onions or tomatoes. That is something that can help maybe as Mama, you as Mama Mboga to see what, what can I do now to revamp my business and increase my sales. So I think there's so much um, in learning amongst, uh, amongst each other. There's a rule that I think is no longer valid where people say um, we have six degrees of separation. So for example, there are six layers between Aya Zanzira and let's say the president of let's say the US. Nowadays with technology and and the world being a very small global village, those degrees have reduced. So if you as Mama Boga can have access to maybe uh, a mentor, a potential investor, but if you don't ask, if you don't reach out, if you don't maybe take some time to check in with what is possible, you might not be able to access the resources and maybe the information that you need to have to your business. Yeah. From what I'm getting uh, from all this, it's just like uh, there's so much information are scattered everywhere. It's just for us to be intentional, and uh, no, no one is. Uh, that utterly disadvantage. It's just that you have to create your own uh, your own opportunity, mm -hmm. which is, is very key. Um, so, onto to our next uh, next question is that what are some of the key important metrics in branding? So, I think uh, branding is lived in the market marketing and branding and marketing efforts ultimately need to result in sales. But I think, so you can always, so as you track your sales, I believe you can always measure how much of those sales are attributed to your branding effort. So I believe the, the biggest 
maybe play or or checking this or tapping into how assessing how your branding efforts can be measured is to track your sales. There's usually a very sometimes it's a very long chain or or of of linkages. So let's say if you decide to um, if you decide to maybe ask why reach out to you you had been selling to 15 customers a, a month and then you now sell to 25 reaching out or conducting just some simple questions between the to just ask why there's a jump in sales is key in understanding what you've done differently or what your product has done differently. So some of the metrics I think is conducting interviews or just uh, simple questions. Why someone has opted to buy your product over what they were buying before? Because before someone was your customer, they were a customer to someone else. That's the biggest, one of the biggest uh, important things to note. So always ask, always find out. Um, so I think the biggest, how many people you're, you're finding out what has changed for them is a key metric in understanding your branding efforts. Now your marketing efforts can be tied to sales. And by marketing, I mean maybe even advertising. So when you put up 10 posters in, your, in let's say, um, in, five, in a five kilometer radius about your business, and you see a jump in sales, you're able to tell. Like I printed 10 posters or five posters, I've gotten incrementally this, but you won't know exactly what that increment has come from. If you don't ask two people who you've never served before. So as I just going back to understanding and ensuring you're asking the right questions to your customers to understand where they came from and why they've chosen to buy from you. So I think the biggest branding metric is uh, how big is your brain and conducting as many uh, questions to your customers? Yeah. Or as often, yeah. Is it is it okay for for somebody to be rigid in a brand in a brand, or can should one be flexible? Or that when trends are changing, you are able to to bend with those changes and brand yourself or brand your business in a new way or just you should just maintain that initial brand that you had. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a balance. You have to be consistent. Like you say, you committed or you promised people high quality. You you can't you can't go back and say, oh here is a standard quantity I am changing. There, there's an element of balancing the consistency, but there's also the agility that needs to get in and adaptability based on the market conditions. So consistently communicating and keeping your promise is integral, but being rigid about um, macro factors, micro factors is, is something that you, you can't continuously say you're going to sell your product at a certain price. Yet, let's say your raw materials cost has gone down and other players have gone down. You see, you ultimately need to reduce your price so that you remain competitive. So you, you will drop your price because you're adaptable, you need to serve your customer, at the most fairest price, but you still consistently deliver quality. So it's a balance of your consistency in the prom promise, but also adjusting to the variables that, that allow you to continuously serve those customers at the promise you committed to. I don't know if I've lost you there. So <laughs> no, you're still with me. Yeah, so I think it's back like the same way as an individual. If I said I committed to um, delivering my, my uh, 
um, tasks at work. I'm consistent in that, but because the environment, let's say, has changed, like what happened when COVID hit, there I need to adjust on how I do that. So if I was a sales person during that duration, I can no longer go out as much, but what can I do to continue serving the customers that I wasn't able to serve when I was now restricted in terms of movement? So it's, I should consistently deliver what I said I do as a salesperson, but find ways, be adaptable in in what I in what I I promise to do. I, I hope that has uh, handled that question. Yeah, yeah, it, it has. From from what you have explained, I've got three things whereby be consistent, have a balance, and be just adaptive. And mm. you mix all these things, I believe, uh, we will be saving the marketplace. If you had amassed all the wealth and all the money in the world, what would you do with it? I would... I think the first thing is, the things I feel that are pressing now, I would definitely uh, address them. So, uh, yeah, I'd address my personal needs, my personal needs, of course, and those of my family. And I think I'd build my legacy around building community centers. I think community is what brings people together and we form those communities virtually, but we've lost or maybe had less chances of, of building community physically or face to face. So I think that's, that's where I'd put my money behind. Uh, so from communities around reading, so making libraries, libraries accessible, making um, access to participating in sports, making access to participating in art, that's what I'd put my, after starting my immediate needs and those of my family. Uh, it's interesting, you know, I was, I was waiting to hear, I will travel here and there, I will, I'll party and all that, so that uh, it seems maybe uh, that's Maybe <laughs> it's, it's part of my pressing needs, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We, uh, we are coming to the to end of this session and uh, I'll just give you an opportunity to give your parting shot. What's within your control is the, of course, the branding check. Do I have my logo? Do I have my tagline? Do I have my packaging? Do I have my branches set up well? Of what, what really counts or where the balance or where the rubber meets the road is how people perceive your brand. So always, always pray for those interactions with your customers the bad ones especially and the good ones to put yourself in that in the heat of someone saying something negative about your brand and learn from it i think a lot a lot of the things we we want to project perfection but that's not where that's not where success comes from success comes from learning from failure especially with your brand so you could have the checklist which is within your control already, but putting yourself in that space where you don't have control, you don't have control how people will receive you. But for your brand to get to the next level, you have to always go back to that and understand what do I want to, what do I want people to feel and interact with my with my shop, with my duty, with my with my bag with my wallet what do i want them to feel i think that that's how it thank you thank you so 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 much and uh, i believe our entrepreneurs will learn a lot but personally for me today you've taught me something it's just that uh, benedict if you want to succeed if you want to make anything out of your life is just be ready to embrace fear be ready to embrace that failure, learn from it, try something new, fail, 
as you grow and as you learn from Isa, as you navigate to success, because there's, there's, there's no shortcut or a, a short roadmap to success. It's just you have to learn from all these nitty gritties, things that come come from it. So thank you so much uh, for, for creating time to come and speak with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.